Welcome to We Love History. I'm James from Historic Environment Scotland. While we've been in lockdown, we've been giving you a bit of an insight into our work on Scotland's history through these live stream events. It's a Q&A session, so please do ask a question, but you'll need to log into YouTube, which you can do with a Google account. Um, today, I have great pleasure in welcoming colleague, author, historian, Simon Green to talk to us about Dumfries House a magical place that for the latter half of the 20th century kind of went under the radar, quietly slumbering in deepest, darkest Ayrshire before being rather abruptly awoken in 2007 at this much publicity. So hopefully that's a good teaser to keep you all hanging in. Um, so I guess you all know how this works. I, 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 I'm going to ask a question to Simon. Um, so Simon, would it be fair to think of Dumfries House as a palimpsest? And if so, could you elaborate on how generational change has left its imprint on the place? Well, good afternoon, James and all. Um, a, a, a palimpsest, uh, yes, it is, because like any house, it's developed over a great number of years. Um, and, and it's been a family home um, right from um, 1760 through to um, 1993, in effect. And so, and as with all homes, it changes, it's changed and developed over time. And so, and lots of things have gone on, some big things and some small things. But what's really fascinating about Dumfries House is that it still has the character of the 18th century house that it was, uh, that, that um, it began as. Um, and, um, and that was, has, per, has pervaded the idea of the curation of the house all the way through. Um, it's, it, it, it sits, um, as, as James has mentioned, it sits in wonderful parkland in, in, in Ayrshire, in a, in a sort of post coal mining area of, of uh, rural Ayrshire. Um, and it slept or was very hidden because it was the, the home of the Dowager Marchioness um, of, of Butte. And, and it was her very much her private home. So it wasn't ever open to the public. And she lived a very comfortable life in this very beautiful house. Um, she'd moved there originally in the 1930s as a young bride of the Earl of Dumfries and um, was rudely and, and loved the 18th century and loved the Georgian nature of Dumfries House. And then when she moved, uh, when her husband inherited the Butte title, she had to move to Mount Stuart, a great Victorian mansion, which she absolutely hated and she tried to Georgianize. And so she really loved going back in her retirement. Um, or in her in her in her widowhood to Dumfries House and back to the Georgian splendour. So I guess it would be unfair to say she was a bit of a Miss Havisham character because, by all accounts, she she was quite a stylish lady who lived quite a quite a interesting life. Uh, I think yes, Miss Havisham not, but um, she she maintained um, a certain lifestyle. So there was um, it was fully staffed. She loved racehorses. And kept a, a string of racehorses. She she had a um, she had a a, a, um, a comfortable life um, in, in a very much in a, in a stylish um, and enjoyed and, in, and inhabited the whole house, complete with her liveried butler, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And that went up till the till 1993 ish. Yes, very much so. Um, and so she um, and. You know the the estate, um, the, the stables were full of uh, had racehorses in them. Um, she had she didn't do much gardening, but she loved her roses in the front garden, and um, and she just she had a very nice quiet life. Um, loved the racing on television. So there's a very large television in the middle of the Chippendale furniture um, <laughs> in the drawing room, um, and it was and a very comfortable home. Gosh, so I think. This is quite an interesting image that's coming up or has come up um, to maybe talk about that generational change that has flowed through the house and that, and that has left its mark um, and the way that things have been. Maybe um, you wouldn't necessarily, by, by being there, understand because it's very nuanced. So maybe you could um, tell us about that. And, and well, yes, it, it, together. this is a view of, of the dining room um, designed by the Adam brothers. Um, um, for the for the fifth Earl of Dumfries, and there is his portrait by by Thomas Hudson over the fireplace, um, and this is one of his grandest rooms with very elaborate um, plaster work, um, and um, the, the original painting still survive. And now it is furnished as it was um, when it was first created in the 1760s. 
So, um, which is very interesting because um, the, the, the Butte family who inherited the estate um, through marriage in the um, early 19th century kept all the, all the, all the original furniture and it, it got moved around their houses, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but, but Marchioness Eileen was able to bring it all back to, to, to Dumfries House. And so this room has its original furniture. And, but when, when Marchioness Eileen lived here um, in the 20th century, this was her, her morning drawing room and she painted it pink. Um, and so the pink colour is not 18th century at all, but is 1950s. Yeah. And it's her making her morning drawing room, but it has its original carpet and now it contains its original furniture, um, which um, in, in the book, my, my dear friend, um, Dr. Sebastian Pryke talks about at great length. Um, but um, and that's one of the, the magical things about Dumfries House is that although it's changed over time, because the, the, um, there's so much information and so many, and all the furniture survives, you can actually recreate interiors from the past very easily. Yeah, because I was thinking dining rooms aren't normally pink. It's a very sort of feminine, light colour, um, drawing room colour. Um, yes. Um, um, well, when, when, the, when, the, the, uh, when Marchioness Eileen um, got married um, to her, her husband, the Earl of Dumfries, who was the, who was the heir apparent to the Buttes, um, um, they a, new, a new dining room was created at Dumfries House in the, um, the, the, the um, East Wing, um, which had formerly been intended to be a chapel, um, but was, was created, a very smart dining room was created, therefore creating, uh, freeing up space for um, two drawing rooms. Because one must remember, although Dumfries House is very grand, it's actually not that big. Um, and for, for, for smart house parties, etc., um, it was felt that you know at least two drawing rooms were required. Oh. So, um, it, but uh, and every room in Dumfries House has changed over time. But because the Buttes were so aware, right from really from the, the second Marquis um, in the early nineteenth century, that this was a very precious thing, and the, he he he, um, he and his son, the third Marquis both love the house dearly. In fact, the third Marquis calls it, called it the, the homeliest of my homes. Um, and, and he had numerous other homes. Yeah. Um, and they were always aware of the 18th century past and, uh, and of the style and the importance of the interiors. And so they kept them. They altered them and changed them, but they kept the, the spirit. And so now the, um, the great steward of Scotland's Dumfries House Trust can actually um, show the house as this amazing 18th century revival, um, as a survival, sorry, but is actually a completely, a, a drought, a, a quite just a, a particularly altered house, but that, kept, that, that, that still has this 18th century character. Yes, I mean, you can't get away from the 18th century when you're looking into that di dining room slash um, morning room or, you yes. know, um, I mean, one thing we were talking about earlier was, which I was asking you about was the plaster work and the, paintings and the, especially the one over the, um, the dining room service table. Um, yes. and, well, and that's, uh, yeah, you know, that was a painting um, that was bought by the, the, the um, fifth Earl in London by Bassano. And he got, the, I think he probably got the measurements wrong. <laughs> um, and so they, so there was a, uh, they, 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 one of their um, craftsmen made up this gilt, Rococo gilt frame to enlarge the scale of the picture, um, to, 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 uh, to, to fill up the wall, basically. And in fact, the portrait of, of Thomas by, uh, of the fifth Earl over the fireplace is a bit bigger than it should be. And so it actually squ is squashed into the frame. <laughs> so, um, but, um, it, it, the, and the whole story of the, th the, the fifth Earl um, buying all his stuff in London is fascinating, but that's, there's a book on the subject um, that one can read that will give you lots of information about that. I mean, that, that's amazing having your forensic vision on this, because I, I definitely think we would have missed that about the painting in the above the mantelpiece and the, those, those those kind of aspects that you really need to do, you know, research. Yeah. On. And, and while we were doing the survey, there was a lovely moment, um, which I just remembered, which, uh, and I was on a, um, not that we'd be allowed now, but I was on a step ladder looking at the portrait. Um, and discovered that he actually is holding the plans for Dumfries House oh, wow. in, his, in, his, in, his, in his, his, his grand portrait. So that shows how important the fifth Earl felt that his, 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 his smart new house in Ayrshire was. 
I mean, that's a lovely physical connection, a visual and physical connection that, that you get, again, that, that is great to get this insight from you. And I think that probably quite nicely moves me on to my second question about the book and how you went about pulling it together, what you did, the research, what, how you found stuff out, and particularly, um, I'm not going to say were there any salacious um, surprises or, or revelations, but were there things that actually you were like, gosh, I, I didn't realise that, or that's really interesting, or that changes my mind about something even? I think what I, um, the, the research, what happened was we, uh, I, I'd known about the house for many years through Dr. Um, Sebastian Pryke, I mentioned, who'd done his PhD on one of the, some of the furniture, um, including some of the furniture at Dumfries House. So he'd visited when Marchioness Eileen was in residence wow. um, as a student. And, and he said, you know, this is an amazing house. I only saw a bit of it, but it's, it, there's something. And I began to realise that it was very under-researched. Um, and um, um, we did a lot of work trying to get access after Marchioness Eileen died, in, um, thinking that um, it's, it's, a, you know, it's an amazing house. Um, it's whatever happens, it's going to change because um, she's died. You know, we didn't know it was going to be sold at that point, um, but we realised that you know it probably wouldn't dis be, um, it wouldn't stay the same whatever happened. Right. Um, and so we started a, a dialogue, which took many years with the, the estate because they felt it's a private house. It's 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 nothing. It's not a grand monument. It's by you know um, it's by Robert Adam, etc. etc. But they, but they didn't really see it. That's great. It's grandma's house. It's not. Um, anything um, and there's no there was no there's no official um, entree so we just kept on um, and then when we started doing the survey I had a wonderful trip around the estate with these the estate factor who showed me around the house very briefly and then we went around, around the whole of the estate um, or the, the immediate estate and he said and, and it was just his remark was oh well there's quite a lot of stuff at, at Mount Stewart um, was a sort of throwaway remark, and I suddenly thought, oh gosh, this, you know, and what? So what is there? And um, we had some copies of a few things that Kitty Cruft, uh, dear late um, member of staff, had copied from the, the Butte collections as a as a sort of hint. Um, but um, going over to Mount Stewart, discovering this a massive archive, prompted um, we realised the survey was important, just as a record of this house was going to change. And then suddenly this wealth of information in the in the in the archives, um, lots and lots of interesting things came up. Um, um, and um, one of the one of, one of the fascinating things is that because the fifth Earl was always um, aiming above his finances, um, so he basically spent more than he had, he was continuously in debt. Um, and so there are lots and lots of bills for everything from short shirts to alcohol to um, a, 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 um, a bill from Alan, the, the painter Ramsey um, for a portrait of uh, you by me, 10 pounds or some 10 guineas or something. You know, so all this sort of information is, is all in the, in the archive. Um, and then with doing the survey, we began to see there's so much in the house um, that's been changed because we did a detailed measured survey and you began to realize, gosh, what is going on? And if you look at the um, the exterior image um, of the, the of the house, um, what looks like a pavilion, so a subsidiary building on the at the front of the uh, of the image and the and the wing to the left is actually um, the billiard room and smoking room, Gosh, yeah. um, all hidden within a in a, a what looks like an an altered. So that's an Edwardian billiard room and smoking room hidden within the 18th century wing and courtyard. And so the survey began to tease out all these different things. And um, one of the most exciting discoveries um, was that, for me, was that there is, there is the earliest private Turkish bath, in, 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 certainly in Scotland, if not in the UK, wow. at Dumfries House, um, which is completely gone. But it was installed by the third Marquis as, as, as a 20, in effect, a 21st birthday present to himself. <laughs> and then his father removed it when he created the billiard room. His son removed it when he created the billiard room library in that space. So there's all sorts of things going on that, um, uh, and uh, you know, and, and it, it gave a real insight into the history of the house. I couldn't understand why the house wasn't changed very much in the first um, 50 years 
um, which meant all the furniture survived. And it transpired the sixth Earl, who inherited the estate from his uncle, um, had massive he, he, gambling debts um, of over twenty thousand um, pounds in seventeen seventy something. And so his his wife spent her life making the estate pay, and there wasn't any, any spare cash to do anything but keep the estate going. Um, and that's why things survived. And so it's all these little bits of information coming together that, may, that explain why th certain things happened and certain things didn't. So it's amazing that kind of joining up pr process, and then you and then you get this sort of eureka moment when you know you you kind of yes. understand because it's clear that they had a lot of deference for their building and that they were very sensitive to it. Like, as you were saying about placing the billiard room and the, but, but, but also they must've done quite, that must've been quite a radical thing to do as well in terms of impact. Oh, absolutely. It, it, uh, and, uh, and um, you know, they, they, um, the, the house has concrete floors throughout. Oh. And these were threaded in, in the 1930s um, because they were really panic, panicked about, um, um, uh, and fire, yeah. um, and so they were very worried about fire. So they 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 they, they installed, um, but they kept all the ceilings, and preserved all the ceilings, and and so the, and so and um, and we're also talking about a family who built Cardiff Castle um, in Wales, and built Mount Stuart on the Isle of Bute, two spectacular Victorian houses, and here of the, of the highest, most wonderfully over the top Gothic, and here you have a house. That they kept almost completely intact as a George, as a Georgian reminder. So it's a really it's a fascinating you know. Uh, and they also had House of Falkland and um, various other places that were, were of, of different styles. But George, but Dumfries House remained this wonderful um, place that they always loved, visited regularly, and um, was a, 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 and you know a, 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 a complete contrast. Um, so. Um, uh, no, I think it, it, it is. It's, it's fascinating, and as, as you can probably tell, I can talk for hours on it um, if I'm allowed to. But um, we'll... <laughs> no, we'll, that's what you're here for. So <laughs> that, that's great. I'm, I'm, I'm to remind everybody that you can ask questions during the live chat, and if we don't answer during the live stream, we'll do our best to get back to you with an answer within the next couple of days. Um, so done my terms and conditions bit. So. Um, it's, this is quite a good image as well to, to, to land on the image of the hall. Um, yes, yeah, so this is what, sorry, this is one of the images that that was taken during the first survey, um, and um, this was taken under slightly interesting conditions because the the the, the um, state factor, the state house guardian was was quite wary of us being there, although we had permission. And I, I don't know if you can make it out, but there are actually labels on all the furniture. Yes. Because this photograph is taken just as the furniture has been brought back off the the um, Sotheby's or um, the, the I'm sorry the the the, low, low, the the lorries that were going down to the sale in London, and it was all brought back into the house. Um, and it gives you a very different view of the house. Um, and this this and, and um, like all historical buildings that have had furniture removed and brought back. Um, it has an air of a sort of um, stage set because it's it's being curated. And so the flagons sitting on the table, which are 18th century, um, come from the fourth Marquess's um, collection of pewter. But the hall chairs are original to the room, as is the table. Um, and so there's all sorts of things going on. And the original pictures that were hung in that room have been hung elsewhere. Um, so there's there's a whole variety of things going on. Every picture tells a, a whole sort of different story. And I wonder if maybe you could touch about, I mean, um, you were there in your role in surveying and recording, um, which, which is a key role and function at Historic Environment Scotland and how we build up the archive, which is what we're obviously um, being able to use and, and tell these stories and explain things and uh, piece things together. Um, so maybe you could explain a bit more about your kind of experiences there. Um, well, I think here at, at um, Dumfries House, what, what, one of the things about doing a survey uh, is, is, is the understanding. And it's not just taking some photographs, but it's working out what photographs will, um, the, the stories the photographs will tell. Um, and also there is the, always the back of your mind that you, you might ever, the building might be demolished or might disappear. One hopes it won't, 
So you have to think about you're making a record for posterity, but also you're making a record at a moment in time. So the feeling at this one was it was at that moment um, of time um, before whatever was going to happen. And we don't, knew then that the Great Steward of Scotland's Dumfries House Trust was, getting a, was going to be taking over the building. Um, and so the things were going to change dramatically um, because it was changing from a private house in private ownership into a, um, a, a charitable trust, etc. So things were changing and, and moving and altering. But um, it is about um, and, and, and combining the expertise of our photographers and our drawing office to actually look in great detail. And so we did a, a, a measured survey of the, the whole house, um, and um, which really tricked out some of these details I've been talking about, as well as doing um, all sorts of other things um, about, um, you know, um, just looking at the, the photography and, and looking at details and all the, the wonderful plaster work, et cetera. Um, as well as um, the general views and understanding how the building sits within its 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 estate, so it's it's bringing together the expertise of different parts of the of, of the of, of survey and recording to to make a sensible record that actually stands test of time and is, is useful in, in the future. I mean, I, I, not to be too sycophantic, but I would implore everybody to to have a look at at those photos because they are absolutely beautiful um, and really interesting. Um, and, and do give you um, a really 360 um, understanding of the place. Um, at, they're an amazing resource, which, which you know, is part of what what, what our organisation does. Um, but they allow us to have conversations like this and dialogues and potentially changes within the estate, so people can relate back to those photographs and see what what a particular part looked like at a certain time. Oh, absolutely, and it's been, and they're used by the, the the curators at Dumfries House regularly um, to actually um, to look back at what's happened because quite a lot has ha has happened. And when you go to visit the house, it is very it is different now, um, and which is very special and it's wonderful and it's magical, but it's not um, what we recorded. And so yet again, and, and it makes it, it makes our recording of it even the more relevant because we did it and it's and we knew how it was, so it, it changes. It's, it's, it's recording change. Yes, yeah. I've I've been having a bit of an IT difficulty, which is no surprise with me. Um, but um, uh, I've managed to get a question for you, Simon. Okay. Uh, which is from a chap called Ian, and he says, "Can Simon tell us what Dumfries House shows us about how the butler and the support household used and lived within a country house?" Well, um, unfortunately, I haven't got very long, but it, it, there's, there's a really interesting, um, right from the, eight, the start of the house, um, when it was designed by the Adam brothers in, in, in the 18th century, um, initially, the, 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 the east half of the house, um, so to the furthest away from the, 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 the image, uh, was the male domain, which was the kitchens and the butler's accommodation, and this is on the on the lower, on the ground floor, or the the, the, the basement floor. Um, so the kitchens were in the in in, in the east wing, uh, the butler's pantries, um, and the west wing was um, and with the dining room above, uh, um, and the um, um, the earl of Dumfries's rooms above uh, and next uh, behind behind the dining room, and then the so that's the east side, and then the west side of the house was the drawing room with um, the principal bedchamber or the, the, the family bedchamber on the, on, the, on the principal floor. And then the ladies' uh, rooms below, and ladies' maids um, and, uh, and nurseries, although they were never used, sadly, in the fifth earl's time, however hard he tried, and the laundries were to the left. And so it was very clearly designed. And if you've seen something like Gosford Park um, uh, or, um, and, and Downton, you will see that a very long corridor runs through the, the, all these Edwardian houses with all the service rooms opening off them. At Dumfries House, you have an 18th century version of it. Um, so it's really quite magical that it's all there and, 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 and complete. Because you, you, sometimes you assume that that's a Victorian or an Edwardian construct. So that's really interesting. That... Yeah, and and with, 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 um, it's, it's very much designed very, very specifically for, for, uh, for different functions. And, and it was adapted over the years, um, but, but the same divisions um, survive. 
So you, you're, a, you're a man in demand because you've got another question already. Um, so Margaret asks, can I ask about the tiles in the fireplaces? Are they Delft? And just to quickly in, um, explain, Delft tiles are fired ceramic tiles that, that are often found in Holland, but became popularized throughout Europe. Yes, they are. Um, they are. There are some that are 18th century, um, and um, I think in the dining room. Um, but in the um, but some of them were introduced by Robert Weir Schultz um, in the um, early 20th century when he did the alterations to the house. Um, and so there's lots of um, um, because they were yet again fashionable again. Um, so so um, um, but they are, they are Delft and they're they're um, really interesting. Um, I don't know if you can. But um, some of some of them are, are, are original to the house, but some uh, were replaced, uh, were are new, are are um, uh, installed in the nineteenth century, or late nineteenth, early twentieth century. But right. some of those are historic as well. So um, they're so it's quite a complex story as ever with Dumfries House. Yeah. But there are, but they are definitely delved. Um, that would probably be a good one to move on to the image you have of those changes. Or no, actually, it's this image, isn't it? From well, the tapestry. Yes, um, here's, here's a, an image of the tapestry gallery, uh, which was added by the third Marquis, the designs of, of, of Robert Weir Schultz. Um, and it, it ho holds the tapestries that the third Earl of Stair, whose, photograph, whose portrait is above the fireplace, um, acquired in, in, when he was ambassador in Paris. Um, they, they originally hung in the drawing room, but were moved by the third Marquis into the tapestry gallery. Um, and I realise I'm, I'm sort of talking far too much, but um, Fireplace was designed by James Byers of Tonley, um, Aberdeenshire, when he was in Rome um, for Robert Adam. Who, and Robert Adam was building a house in Newton Park in, in Bedfordshire for, for um, the third Earl of Butte. That house had a major fire, was rescued from the fire and, and um, shipped up with other fireplaces to um, Mount Stuart on Butte. And then when, when the tapestry gallery was, was being finished in 1908, it was taken out of Mount Stuart, the morning room in Mount Stuart, and installed in the tapestry gallery at, um, at um, an extension to a Robert Adam house. <laughs> So it's, 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 you, you couldn't make it up. <laughs> no, no. And it proves that everybody likes to recycle, no matter how rich you are. Um, Absolutely. And, 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 and there's another of the fireplaces but from, from um, um, Rome or in, is, is in, the, in the new dining room as well. So they, these things exist all over the house. Um, I've got another question, Simon, um, from Margaret again. And she says, did the Butte make their fortunes from coal? Um, in which um, made, um, enabled the coal to be shipped all over the world. They, they did own coal, coal um, uh, uh, collieries in the um, um, development of Cardiff. So it, it, the coal is involved in Cardiff, came from the Dumfries House estate, which was actually far more productive than the Mount Stuart estate on Butte. Gosh. I mean, and would that have been something that you found out through the Butte archives? Yes, and so it was, it was just at the time going around each of the. Uh, uh, he spent two months in each in each estate, um, one month each uh, at a time, um, and um, and there's a lot of discussion about things coming backwards and forwards, and where the, where the finances are going, and and the whole thing almost collapsed um, in the 1870s, and they almost became bankrupt, but they survived and they became one of the richest families in the world at that point. And I think that leads us very nicely onto the last image for Dumfries House that you've selected for us. Yeah, so th this is a fascinating one from our collections. Um, it's, this is from the National Art Survey, which the Marcus of Butte, uh, the uh, for, uh, fourth Marcus of Butte funded, or was one of the funders. And it shows Dumfries House in 1900. Um, Sorry showing, about that. <laughs> um, showing all the, um, with, the fencing round all the gardens, if you can make out, um, with a bicycle propped against it. The bicycle is the bicycle used by the, um, the third Marquis, didn't allow the shooting of any animals on his estate. Um, and so the gardeners um, were traumatised because they, they, they couldn't get rid of the, the, the rabbits were, you know, had, had a heyday when all the planting was put out for his visit. 
but um, but the, the it, so it's a very and, and the, the picture also shows building work going on in 1900. These massive alterations to Dumfries House with rather um, wild. Um, you can see the, the, the sort of bits of timber and things. An enormous ramp going up to the front yeah. door. Um, so this is for all the alterations that were carried on between um, just as the, the third Marquis died and the fourth Marquis inherited between 1897 and 1905. Um, that's, that's an amazing photograph in terms of recording a, a snapshot of a kind of a, a building at an apex of change, I guess. Oh, yes, it, it's very unusual. And I think it was it, it was taken by one of the for the, 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 the surveyors for the National Arts Survey students. Um, and that's the only time he was there, so he had to take it. And he probably would have liked it to be all clean and tidy, um, but actually it's a much more interesting photograph because yeah. because all these things survive. Yes. I've got another question. I've got a question from Graham, um, and he says, do you make non-photographic records of the site? How do you handle harmful materials? For example, all the white paint in one of the rooms. Quite extensive risk assessments. Um, and we do we don't do anything that's invasive, so we're we're not um, we're, we're not actually um, uh, risk assessment, um, and um, and so the, um, then that's done for by for the photographers as well as the drawing office, and the photographers are aware of um, and Dumfries House was relatively easy because it was it, it was very well maintained and inhabited. It's obviously much more complicated mm -hmm. if you have a, a, a derelict building. And there are some spaces you can't get into, um, and, and that sort of thing. And and you, and you, you just you can't do anything about that. Um, you just have to accept. Whereas Dumfries House was well maintained, um, and you know, um, and we could do a, a, a series of risk assessments that made it um, very, very um, relatively easy, if enormous. And and and, and, and at times, um, you know, the family uh, um, had, you know. The house is nominally inhabited, but they only live in a small part and the rest of it is in terrible state. So, you know, you, you, it's a whole variety of spaces that you can come across that, um, that, uh, that and, and that's why we do these extensive risk assessments. You know, pigeons um, are a complete nightmare. Um, and, um, and, and uh, you know, and so it is, it is very much, and also you go into houses where, you know, we can't, um, it's not possible, you have to just accept. But Dumfries House, it was relatively simple because it was it was a well maintained um, house that that um, had slept rather than being being um, abandoned. So maybe this is the point, Simon, where you you could display your your book for for all of us oh, to uh, to have a look at. I don't know if that's um. um so it's not. I, I decided that the the story of the restoration and the the. Um, the recreation of the interiors, etc., um, is another story to be told. Was a good, a good finishing point, but it gives you a, 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 um, of all sorts of arcane things. But um, hopefully, it's it's. Um, is it on our website? It is. It is on the website. Um, and um, so I think I think you and I have rather chatted away. So um, I don't think we're going to touch on um, great Scottish interiors, but. Um, both myself and Alison have, have discussed those previously, but um, this has been absolutely fascinating. Um, and I'd like to say very a big thank you to Simon for volunteering his time to 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 give us this insight into Dumfries House, which which you know has been as I've used that word before forensic. Um, Simon, I'm going to be very cheeky and ask you if if you had to describe. It, so the, the buzzword for the for the kids is the is USP unique selling point. He is um, it, um, a house that's completely changed, but stays the same. And so it's that idea that the the house um, has been radically altered, but that but the stewardship by the particularly by the Butte family has meant that it can still be seen as an eighteenth century house. Yeah. So and it's I think stewardship would be would be another word. No, I think, I think that's that, and that very much comes through in your book as well. That that imprint and the imbuing history, but but being able to read through it and almost understand the hands that made things and sat places and did things and commissioned. Um, yes, and I think the fact that you have a, a um, Robert Weir Schultz and the Third Marquis do an overlay of arts and craft inspired woodwork and plaster work throughout the house, throughout the alterations to the house. 
and extensions, which is a fascinating um, adjunct to the the Adam um, mm. um, interiors. So, uh, so there's a very interesting complementary things going on. Mm. I think the word simpatico as well, but that's that's rather yeah. artsy. Um, but um, so I think at this point we're, we're going to round up and thanks very much for everybody who's tuned in. And as Simon said, his book is out there and I, you know, do do have a look at it. It's it's great. And um, thank you very much for um, tuning into our live um, stream. Thank you.